Assalamu alaikum and good day. We're now on the topic of oblique shock waves in our high speed aerodynamics class. Today we're going to look at part 2 of the chapter, which is on the strategy to formulate the equations on these oblique shocks. The cover image is the CFD results on the X 59 supersonic transport aircraft, or Quest, developed by NASA recently, with a test flight to be expected around 2021. You can check out more about it at the NASA website at the bottom right corner of this page. The main question is, how do we solve an oblique shock wave problem? What are the gas properties after the flow crosses an oblique shock? What is the angle of the shock? How does that depend on the shape of the object? What are the range of flow dynamics that can occur around an oblique shock? We have here the incoming supersonic flow in region 1 with its velocity V1 and its Mach number M1. After it crosses the shock, its velocity changes into V2 or its Mach number M2. The flow also is going to be deflected so that it is aligned with and parallel to the inclined surface. The main idea to solve this problem is that the incoming flow can be decomposed into its vector components. The component vectors must be defined relative to the oblique shock. So we would have one component parallel to the shock which is the tangential velocity L1 and another component perpendicular to the shock, which is the normal velocity N1. Now, here's the important part. Because N1 is normal to the shock, it will be compressed and slowed down into a subsonic flow when it crosses the shock. So, the N2 vector is shorter than N1. On the other hand, L1 is parallel to the shock, so it's not going to be affected by the shock. That means we have L2 to be identical to L1 in terms of their magnitude and direction. Here's another important part. When we finally combine the two vector components downstream, N2 and L2, they become V2. Because N2 is shorter than N1 and L2 equals L1, the downstream flow will be turned. And this deflection has to be exactly right such that the V2 flow is parallel with the inclined surface. Also, because L2 remains as L1, the flow may still be supersonic. There are two important angles in this geometry. Number one, the shock angle beta, and number two, the deflection angle delta. Because delta is the actual physical parameter of the object, it is fixed and cannot be changed once you have set it up. It is a shock angle that is a variable that will vary accordingly to match the conditions surrounding the flow. So, when a supersonic flow moves over an inclined surface, a shock will be formed at just the proper angle to ensure that the deflected flow is aligned to the surface. The question now is, what is the value of beta that makes it just right to produce that exact shortening of N2 and that exact deflection of the flow to be identical to delta? To answer this, we need to formulate our equations. Let's go to the basics first, which is the trigonometry of the problem. We need to define one more angle, which occurs after the shock. It's beta minus delta, and you can prove this to yourself easily. From the trigonometry, you can work out the velocities n1, n2, and l1 in terms of v1 and the angles. You can also define them in terms of their Mach number, mn1, mn2, n, ml1, and ml2. Note that even though l1 equals to l2, ml1 is not equal to ml2. This is because the temperature t1 and t2 are not the same. It's important to highlight here that the Mach number equations are very important. mn1 equals to m1 sine beta, and mn2 equals to m2 sine beta minus delta. These two equations will be used to derive our equations and to solve our problems on oblique shock. Now, let's look at the strategy to solve the problem. Because the only primary changes across the shock is the normal velocity, we can focus on the flow normal to the shock. By doing this, we have mn1 crossing the shock into mn2, which is a straightforward normal shock problem. So now, let's look at our normal shock relations again. These are the pressure ratio, density ratio, and temperature ratio. The input parameter in terms of the incoming flow is mn1. 
which is the decomposed normal velocity that is perpendicular to the shock. And we already know that mn1 equals to m1 sine beta. Also, the downstream flow after crossing the shock is mn2, which is equal to m2 sine beta minus delta. When we look at this mn2 equation, we can identify two known parameters, m1 and delta, and two unknown parameters, m2 and beta. To solve for these two unknowns, we need two equations. We already have this mn2 equation. We need one more equation to be able to solve for m2 and beta. To do that, let's look at the geometry of the flow and the shock again. I've explained earlier that these three parameters, the angles beta and delta, and the flow velocity m1 are somehow related to each other. From the geometry, we can see that tangent beta equals to n1 divided by l1 and tangent beta minus delta equals to n2 divided by l2 which is the same as n2 divided by l1 because l2 equals to l1. Therefore, the ratio of the tangents of the angles is equal to the ratio of the normal velocities n2 divided by n1. From the conservation of mass, we find that the ratio of the normal velocity n2 over n1 is inversely equal to the ratio of the density. And we can use the ratio of the density in terms of its normal shock relations as shown in our previous slide. Finally, when we combine both of these equations, we got this equation as shown in the box that relates between the three key parameters beta, delta and m1. So this is our second equation that we need as discussed in the previous slide. Let's call this equation A. But we need to expand the equation A, specifically the term tangent beta minus delta. Using trigonometry, we can split this term into tangent beta minus tangent delta divided by 1 plus tangent beta times tangent delta. Then, we can substitute this back into the top equation labeled A. That rearrangement will give you this equation, where beta is the only unknown parameter, and the two known parameters are m1 and delta. Since the unknown parameter is in the right side of the equation, and cannot be explicitly extracted in terms of the other known parameters, we cannot solve this equation directly. But this equation can still be solved either by trial and error or by using a graphical approach. If you plot this equation that we just derived, you'll get this graph. Its x-axis represents the deflection angle delta, the y-axis represents the shock angle beta, and the multiple contour lines here represent different values of the incoming supersonic flow m1. So this is our graphical solution to this equation. For any values of m1 and delta, we can find the corresponding values for beta. One interesting thing from this graph is that for each value of delta, you'll find two values of beta, a lower value and a higher value at any specific value of m1. For example, a delta of 15 degrees at m1 equals to 2, we can trace two values of beta of about 45 degrees and about 80 degrees. For the time being, we'll use the sets of lower values of beta first in all our solutions. Go through the reason why later in the next video. So that's the end of part 2 of the oblique shock chapter. With the things that we've covered in this video and the earlier part 1 video, you can test your understanding of this topic on the two sample problems in our PDF lecture note that I have posted at our eLearn portal. I'll also send you a short quiz to test your conceptual understanding on the oblique shock topic that we've covered thus far. Okay, we'll meet again in our next video. Until then, bye!